Already the key to a couple secrets, as well as one of the most useful items added in the Noita beta branch, the Paha Silma, or Evil Eye, has a guaranteed spawn location west of the tree atop a stone pillar in the snowy wasteland. This eye-shaped artifact projects a malevolent glare. You can also find it on pedestals and in chests anywhere in the world. As for the uses, it very easily cuts through soft materials like wood and dirt, and powders like coal, sand, and snow. It also deals a surprisingly effective amount of damage, and, most importantly, evaporates or deletes even the most dangerous liquids, including lava and acid. In order to showcase the first secret attached to this item, we must head over the mountain and into the desert, where, atop the pyramid, we're greeted with a now familiar sight, an evil eye engraved in the brickwork. Holding the eye and flying upwards reveals a series of magical platforms, each spaced apart just enough for us to reach. These platforms aren't just invisible, but completely cease to exist when not holding the eye. This is one example of the breadcrumbs the developers have been adding to the game so that players can more easily figure out some of the secrets, because eventually they lead us into the eastern cloudscape, home of the Coral Chest of Light. And now we head back to the west, into the depths of the work-in-progress Snow Chasm, which is now the Haunted Snow Chasm. One of the most dangerous locations in the game, because it is filled with intangible, i.e. invincible, spectral enemies, whose attacks are not intangible. They will kill you. All the spectral enemies are spawned by ocular ghost stones, such as the one here that I'm so desperately trying to destroy. Because of all of these, this is definitely the most hectic area in the game. One of the most effective ways to destroy the ghost stones is to use explosion and electrical damage. Otherwise, nuking this entire cave is actually a viable strategy. Other than the spectral enemies, Uckos, Hisi, and worse, you'll find these guys. Ghostly skulls that appear as blue particles unless under the gaze of an evil eye. These can be defeated by throwing an active eye on the ground so that they remain corporal, and then typically hitting them with explosion damage, which is a big hint for something we're approaching. Down towards the bottom left of the area, we'll find a passage leading even further to the left, dead ending in the Forgotten Cave with the new ghost boss. The bottom of the arena contains a ghost stone and two green resurrection crystals that heal and apply invulnerability to nearby enemies, including the boss, so these should be destroyed first. Just like the ghostly skull enemies, the boss cannot be damaged unless under an evil eye's gaze, which will make it visible and vulnerable to mostly explosion damage, sticking with the theme of this area. When defeated, it drops a full heal and and the Sun Seed. It glows, full of promise. This item grants you the all-seeing eye effect, if you don't already have the perk, which is obviously very useful when traversing the Magical Temple and Wizard's Den areas. As a bonus, let's head there now to check out a couple other interesting things. Now, when the wizard boss in the throne room is defeated, it drops a new item, the Wand Core. This artifact can open the potential of wands to you even without perks. Meaning, when held, it grants you the ability to edit wands anywhere. As you can see, it also converts most liquids to concentrated mana, including acid and lava. Holding it near the Magical Temple Toxic Cloud Traps will allow you to produce infinite amounts of this stuff. And, as another bonus, Holding a Water Stone will now grant you Breathless, but be careful because it doesn't refill the Breath Meter when activated. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, and Happy Noiting.